Hi guys, we started um, lesson 5-1 in the last video. We're going to continue finishing example 3 and 4. Okay. So in the next page, look at example 3. We're going to interpret the graph of a function. Jay rides, uh, rides, a, rides in a boat from his home to his friend's home in a neighboring state. The graph of the function d of t is equal to 30 times absolute value t minus 1.5 shows the distance of the boat in miles from the state line at t hours. Assume the graph shows Jay's entire trip. All right, so now we have something else inside the absolute value. Um, instead of instead of um, outside. So you've learned transformation. What does that mean? If you have a change inside the absolute value, that's, oh, that's like a parenthesis. So if you have a change in there, it's not going to change the entire graph entire function. It changes the x values first. So that is a horizontal movement. And all horizontal movements are backwards because your equations are in terms of y, your vertical movement. So in order to solve for horizontal movement, you need to solve for your x, okay? And also you have a number 30 multiplied uh, outside the absolute value sign. So that means you have a vertical stretch because you're multiplying it by a number greater than one. So if you look at the graph, you'll notice that all the y values are increasing much faster. That's 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 here. You have 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5. Why? Because your graph is going to look really squished if you graph it. Okay. So um, let's see how it looks like. D of t is equal to 30 times absolute value t minus 1.5. So look at this graph, it's super squished. It's, um, it's vertically stretched, which also means it's horizontally compressed. And you move 1.5 unit to the right. Whoops, I don't want to translate. But anyway, so that's 1.5 unit to the right from zero, right? Your vertex moves. And you can see that the function is decreasing from left to right for the half part. The function is increasing this part. The minimum distance from the state line is zero miles. So, whoops. So when the ship goes appro approaches um, the border, the distance uh, gets smaller and smaller. And then when it's there, it's there. like or distance away at zero. And then when it crosses the border and then it goes further away, it increases again. So how far does Jay travel to visit his friend? Jay began his trip at 45 miles from the state line. Travel, if you look at the graph, he started 45 miles from the state line because time at zero hours is 45 miles away, right? So you need to be able to read the graph. You start at 45 miles, which is, this is 45 miles. And that's your y-intercept. And that means 0, 0,45 means zero hours, 45 miles away, right? That's where it started. And travel to our state line. And then after 1.5 hours, 1.5, Five comma zero. The distance is zero, which means he arrived the state line. 
after 1.5 hours, he crossed the state line. And then he traveled away from the state line and was 45 miles from the state line after three hours. Dot, 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 that's three. So that's three comma 45 again. Okay, so he traveled a total of 90 miles to visit his friend because he traveled 45 and 45 uh, towards it and 45 away from it. So total, he traveled 90 miles. But total hours, he traveled three hours, okay? How does the graph relate to the domain and range as a function? Your domain is only positive because he, his, uh, he starts at zero. And there's no situation where it's a negative hours, right? So your T is going to be greater than zero, less than 1.5, um, which is the distance to the border is decreasing. And then from 1.5 to 3 is when the distance is increasing. And the maximum and minimum values would be your miles, the greatest mile and the uh, lowest mile, 45 and zero. When you reach the border is zero miles away. When you are starting or when you go back, it's 45 miles away. So the range would be from zero to 45, including zero and 45, okay? All right, so let's look at try number three. A cyclist competing in a race rides past a water station. The graph of the function d of t is equal to one over three times absolute value t minus 60. Uh, shows her distance from the water station at t minutes. So t is in minutes instead of hours now. Assume the graph represents the entire race. What does the graph tell you about her race? Can you read the graph and interpret the graph and explain what happened at the graph. Okay, see if you can do that. Um, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, so if you look at the graph, the graph has a y-intercept at 20. So your first point here is zero comma 20, which means when the array starts, where um, do they start from? 20 kilometers away from the water station. Okay, the race started 20 kilometers from the water station. And then the, the, the cyclist rode at a constant rate of four over three kilometers per minute because that's, that's, the, that's the slope, right? You go down, uh, that's five, five miles right, because that's 15. So go down five, negative five over one, two, which means five and 15, 15 minutes, five kilometers over minutes, right? So that's gonna be one over three, right? So, the cyclist rode at a constant rate of one over three kilometers per minute. Yes. So every one kilometer, he cycles for three minutes. Or you can do, you can count 10, 20, and then 20 over one, uh, 20 over 30, right? So negative 20 over 30, negative 10, negative 10 over 30 also gives you one over three. So that's your slope. It, um, it, he, the cyclist rode at a constant rate, which means his speed of one over three kilometers per minute reaching the water station at 60 comma zero. Reaching the water station in 
60 minutes. And the water station was halfway point of the race because he rode another 16 minutes, the 20, and then he uh, finished the distance, the race, okay? Okay, moving on to the next example. Example four, determine rate of change. The graph shows Jay's boat ride across the state line from example three. We're gonna continue with this graph. What is the rate of change over the interval to less than or equal to T, less than or equal to 2.5, which means T is greater than two and less than equal to 2.5. So what is the rate of change over this interval? What does it mean in terms of the situation? Okay, so T here should represent the hours. So DT is 30 um, times T minus 1.5 is your equation, right? And then when your time is when your time is between two and two point five, two and two point five. I know it says h, it means time in hours, but your variable should be t. Okay, um, two and two point five is the red part here. How does it change? What is the rate? What is the slope? You count the slope. Oh, this is uh. This is 2, 15, and that is uh, 2.5, 30. And so the rate is 30 minus, that is your slope equation, 30 minus 15 over 2.5 minus 2, 15 over 0 0.5, which is 30 over 1. Okay, so that is your slope. See your slope equation. And then um, that means the rate of change over this interval is 30, and it represents the speed of the boat in miles per hour. And because the rate is positive, it means the distance is increasing. If the rate, if the, your, your slope is negative, this is a negative slope. For this one, you're going down. So you're you're your slope is negative 30. This one here should have positive 30, which means your distance is decreasing until you hit it, hit the point of the border, and then your distance increases again, okay? Part number four, Kyle Ta gets on a moving walkway at the airport. Then eight seconds after she gets on, she taps Lisa, who is standing alongside the walkway. The graph shows Kata's distance from Lisa over time, okay, from Lisa. So here is Lisa. Um, calculate the rate of change in her distance from Lisa from six seconds here to eight seconds, and then from eight seconds to 12 seconds. What do the rates of change mean in terms of Kata's movement? First, figure out the, um, the slope for this interval number one, and then figure out the slope for this interval, right? Using the slope equation. Uh, use the points in your interval. So use the points two point, no wait, six, six comma, that's four, and a comma zero. Your slope is four minus zero and six minus eight using the slope in the, the slope form. Um, and that's four over negative two. And that's negative two. Your slope is negative two, right? Which means
which means uh, uh, your getting your distance from uh, Lisa is decreasing. So you're going closer and closer to Lisa. Kata is going closer and closer to Lisa. And then interval two, use the points a comma zero, use the endpoints here and um, 12 comma, I can't really see. 12 comma, what could that be? Okay, that's 12, so that could be 10, 12 comma 10, right? So 12 comma 10. Using that, your slope is 10 minus zero over 12 minus eight, which is 10 over four, which is 2.5, two and a half. So Kara is going away from Lisa by 2.5 feet per second. And for number one, by um, two feet per second. And your speed doesn't have to be negative because you're already uh, indicating the direction. She, she's going closer. And so it must be negative, okay? So when it hits 8.0, 8, 8,0 is where Hata meets Lisa. Yay. Okay. So absolute value functions are used when we're describing distances, the change of distances. Okay. That was um, our pretty much our lesson. Um, so to summarize, absolute value function has a vertex, the point where the, the slope changes, and then and that's going to be either the minimum value or the maximum value if it's a negative um, function. And the uh, symmetry, axis of symmetry intersects the vertex and divides the graph into two sections that are images of each other under reflection. Okay, that was lesson 5-1. We'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.